feet tall and full of questions. You must have thought I was the smartest man alive. And I didn't have all the answers to every little how and where and why. Like daddy, why is the sky so blue today? Does Jesus really hear me when I pray? When I grow up, will I be just like you? Will I be tall and strong and brave? Let those who are redeemed in Jesus Christ say amen. Let those who love the Lord say amen. Happy Father's Day. I would like to just go into this prayer and thanking our fathers, thanking you know these men, these brothers, these friends in a loving way. Oh loving, merciful God, whose power power is beyond our scope and whose wisdom is beyond our understanding. We turn to you in faith and assurance and knowing that every emotion and every need is already known to you. O oh, gracious and merciful God, our thoughts and prayers today are turned toward our fathers, our warriors, our modern day heroes. For the families who have increase the joy in the lives of their families. We give you thanks and praise to God's holy name. O oh, gracious and loving God, we give thanks for these good men who sustained and supported us in our living, who loved us no matter what. What a blessing they are to all who know them. O oh, gracious and merciful God, we pray for those whose father presence is greatly missed, who have gone on to glory. May we take time to gratefully recall all they have given us. For those who fathers have recently lost or who are facing the intimate loss of their own fathers, may we find comfort in their grief, hope in their despair, and courage in the love that their fathers have given them. O oh, gracious and all-powerful God, we give you thanks today for all those whose gifts for fatherhood is so strong that they have allowed their caring to spill over into the lives of others, providing the guidance and stability, the nurture and the love needed. O oh, gracious Lord, we recall with sadness fathers who are separated from their children through life choices made by them or others. Give them the insight and wisdom, the courage and perseverance to parent in whatever creative and life-giving ways that are open to them. Give them the courage to make the decisions which allow their children to prevail. We pray for the single fathers who struggle to both parent to their children to provide all the emotional, physical, and spiritual needs without the constant support of a spouse. May they find the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to lead and guide them to feel loved and confident to succeed in this world. Let us pray to Almighty God and give praise to those fathers who strive to balance the demands of work marriage and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. Let us pray to the Almighty God and give praise to those fathers who lack a good role model for a father, but overcame that obstacle and worked to become a worthy and virtuous father. Let us pray to Almighty God and praise those fathers who by their own account were not always there for their children but who continue to love and to help them to grow and to support them 
and their endeavors. Let us pray to Almighty God and give praise to those fathers who have been wounded by words and actions of their children. Let us pray to Almighty God and praise those fathers who despite marital discord have remained in their children's lives. Let us pray to Almighty God and give praise to those fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has shown them that they are beautifully and wonderfully made in God's image. Let us pray to Almighty God and give praise to those fathers who are stepfathers, freely choose the obligation of fatherhood and earn their stepchildren's love and respect. Let us pray to Almighty God and give praise to those fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold the child in their heart. Let us pray to Almighty God and give praise to those fathers who have no children but fathered in their role as mentors, coaches, scout leaders, guides, and etc. Those who cherish and nourish the younger generation as if they were their own. Let us pray to Almighty God today and give praise to those fathers who are about to become fathers, that they may seek guidance from their fathers and their fathers and lean on the spiritual direction given to them. O oh God of our weary years and silent tears, give new and future fathers the guidance they need to raise happy and holy children, grounded in the love for God and other people. And remind these fathers that treating their wives with dignity, compassion, and respect is one of the greatest gifts they can give their children. Let us pray to Almighty God and give praise to those fathers who have died but live on in our memory and whose love continues to nurture us. So too on this Father's Day, we remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers pass early or are absent. Grandfathers and uncles, brothers and cousins, teachers, pastors and coaches, and the women of our families. We pray that our fathers who have passed into the afterlife or the next life have been welcomed into your loving embrace and that our family will one day be reunited in your heavenly kingdom. This Father's Day, we remember the many sacrifices fathers make for their children and families. In the way both big and small, they lift children to achieve dreams thought beyond reach. God our Father, bless these spiritual men that they may find strength as fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect and pride. Finally, O oh gracious and awesome God, we rejoice with you at the many fine brothers who despite confusing roles in a rapidly changing society have taken their place as fathers with open hearts, with willingness and joy. We join all fathers today, anywhere and everywhere in the world, praying that their children may be well and happy, a source for joy for years to come. Happy Father's Day, and know you matter to God's children, and we are your leaders, liberators, and your legacy. Amen. Now I would like to invite you to watch the testimonies of four wives lifting up their husbands on Father's Day. My husband, Peter O'Ray, is a very faithful man, um, a patient man, a man of compassion, um, a man that gets up every morning and uh, does what needs to be done for that day. Uh, he loves his family immensely, as well as mankind. And he learned a lot of these things from his dad, who was the father of 11. When we had two sons, Brian and Raymond, um, and he jumped into the um, role of a father right away. 
we didn't have to discuss anything. He uh, changed diapers, he uh, made formulas. And uh, when we had our second son uh, at the time, uh, our oldest was five, and I worked during the day teaching, and he worked from three to 11. And he just told me on his own, you know what, I'm going to make sure that the baby has his formula every day. All the formulas will be made by me every day. You don't have to do any. He said, and I'm gonna get up every morning and take our oldest son to school. And that way he could uh, have some time with him uh, because he only had time with them on the weekend. And uh, this went on for maybe a year or two. And then we discussed maybe if he had ever had the opportunity to go on days that he could take that job. And lo and behold, uh, eventually, uh, the opportunity came for him to go on days, and he took uh, that opportunity to do so. Mind you, there was a decrease in salary because you made more on nights, but he wanted to spend more time uh, with his sons, um, so he went ahead and took the, uh, unfortunate, <laughs> the uh, decrease in salary. Uh, but he needed to do that because as they got older, uh, he didn't want to miss any of the activities. And of course, they got into all kinds of activities. Um, uh, and this is main, especially sports, and it was really him and them. I'm not a, really a sports person. So he spent a lot of time with them, uh, with basketball games, playing soccer, um, sledding at Washington Park, uh, flying a remote control airplane. Uh, when our oldest son needed to go swimming, he was afraid of water, um, he uh, took lessons with him. As I said, he was very uh, compassionate, very patient. Um, my nephew uh, talks to him a lot. One time we were at, it was at Thanksgiving, and um, he uh, came over to talk to uh, Peter about being a, a truck driver. And, um, and Peter was like a sounding board for him. Um, and he also wanted to open up his business. And they talked for hours. He talked to hours for Peter just as a sounding board and, for, and to get advice and so forth. Um, he is able to, Peter is able to sit and talk and help them dissect um, uh, their problems and help them to problem solve and develop more um, options and get a, a better point of view. He has that type of patience. He goes beyond. He does uh, put his um, things on the back burner, uh, his plans and so forth on the back burner sometimes to help others. Uh, right, even right now, he is helping one of his cousins and her husband. He's uh, much younger. They're much younger than we are. And um, this particular uh, uh, cousin and her husband really look up to Peter, and especially her husband. He really looks up to Peter. And um, Peter told them that he would help them uh, redo their home. And one of the rooms that they had to do was the bathroom. And Peter told them that maybe it takes maybe a few weeks, maybe a month, and they could have it done. Um, and however, uh, they had to wire, they had to uh, tear out the floor, they had to gut it. Termites came and so forth. And again, this was only supposed to take maybe a month. In fact, he said before Lent, it would be over. And of course, Lent is over and they're still working on it. But anyway, he's still working and he would work eight to 10 hours every day to help get this done. But uh, finally, they have a beautiful bathroom, a beautiful shower, um, and they are just delighted and they are very thankful for him and his health. Um, and the reason why I said he puts his plans on the back burner, uh, before the holidays, he was saying that um, he was going to finish a project that he's working on, which is building a flight assimilator in our ba basement. That's one of the reasons we bought the new home. And he said he was going to have it done by his birthday. But because he helped, is helping uh, his cousin and her husband redo their home, uh, he has not been able to do that. But he said he's going to be done in a couple of weeks and hopefully. Uh, he can go ahead and get that done. But again, that's, that was his heart, really, working on that is a simulator. He really wanted to get that done. Uh, that's a project that he's wanted for years. But he had told them that he would help them, so that's what he's doing until it's uh, done. And even, um, but after this is done, hopefully in the next week or so, he's going to take a break, and next year he will help them uh, 
I think do the uh, uh, do the basement or the back porch or something. Anyway, he's got more work for them to do. I, I want to finish up reading two scriptures that summarizes uh, Peter. And it is Psalms 103, 13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And Proverbs 4, 11 and 12. I will guide you in the way of wisdom, and I will lead you in upright paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Thank you. When I was first made aware that Mark existed, it was through a mutual friend of ours. Um, he worked with her and I went to high school and junior high with her. And she sent me a picture of this gentleman with his daughter, I think on her first communion date. And um, I th found him to be very attractive. The picture was adorable. Um, and I kind of filed it away because I lived in Chicago. He was in Indianapolis. Um, but for some reason, I kept going back to that picture every now and again. Um, and so finally we um, were able to meet and we actually met um, the Mother's Day weekend. I came home to spend some time with my mom. Um, and there was just something about him that I was compelled to spend time with him. Um, and I kind of thought this might be the one. Um, it was a little unnerving knowing that he had two small children um, from a prior marriage and you know you hear all the stories about coming in and being a stepmom um, not having any children of my own so that was a little unnerving but um, he made that transition um, very easy um, slowly introducing me to the children um, and letting me get to know them as well as giving them an a safe space to get to know me as well um, and as our relationship grew, my relationship with the children grew. And when we decided that this was gonna be something permanent, um, he further stepped up and began supporting me, you know, as I made parental decisions um, with him and for him. Um, but what impressed me the most was his ability to father during those difficult times, um, knowing that there was another relationship with his prior wife that he needed to uh, manage. Um, managed his relationship with his children that no one knew was coming in and taking their mom's place or removing them and taking their place. So I watched him maneuver those relationships. And throughout that entire time, and even today, he's still very supportive. Um, he's very concerned and caring about everybody's feelings that are involved. Um, but at the same time, I also see how he's raising his children and the boundaries and the, the guidance that he gives them to make sure that they're gonna be successful adults one day as themselves. Um, so I remain impressed by this man. Um, it, you know, we've gone through a lot um, as far as careers and um, you know, finding our forever home and those types of things. But every day he amazes me with his love and his devotion. So for that, um, love him unconditionally um, and try to make sure he knows that on a daily basis. Um, this man is the epitome of a father and he more than um, deserves to have a very happy Father's Day. So with all that and with all my love, happy Father's Day, more guests. Nothing I want to talk a little bit about my husband um, and his father and how they have been a strong influence in my life and in my children's lives and how um, they have manifested fatherhood um, not just to my children but but to me as well um, they say when you get married that you marry someone like your father um, I thought my husband Reggie was completely opposite of my dad. Um, 
when I met him, he was very spontaneous and um, liked to have fun, um, was uh, even keel, not, not too excited, but didn't get too down or angry. Um, he was just a lot of fun to be around. And when we first met in college, um, he was different than I was. I, I'm a planner, so the spontaneity was, was something new. And I really enjoyed it. I just had, had a lot of fun with Reggie. Um, I don't think that I thought much about him as a father at the time. Um, but as we, as our relationship matured, we were, we were really good friends um, at first. And then um, that friendship just turned into something more. And um, the more I learned about Reggie, the more that I got to know him, um, I realized he is a lot like my father. And the, and the qualities that I really um, benefited the most from and um, enjoyed the most about my father, um, I saw in Reggie. He was um, kind, would do really anything for anybody. Um, he's direct, <laughs> can be, um, and to the point, tells you things that sometimes you don't want to hear, but you need to hear. And he was, um, and family was really important. It was really important to him to be part of the family, to, to be there to support um, and, and to lead the family. Um, he always says, and he's always told the kids, his, he thinks that each generation of men should be better than the last. So he has made it his life's mission to, to be a better father to his children than his father was to him. Um, and his father was a good father. Um, his, his dad was in the military, and so they traveled all over the world um, when Reggie was growing up. And so lots of um, opportunities to take care of the family, and, and um, especially in new situations, new places, uh, because they traveled all over the world, not just um, around the country. So uh, Reggie talks about all of the experiences he has had um, in learning how to uh, meet new people, how to, how to be comfortable in your own skin, how to be comfortable with yourself. So, because he had to be um, meeting new people every two or three years. Um, he talks about being, having gone to three different high schools um, in four years. So you really do have to be grounded in who you are and what is important to you, what your values are. And he's really insta instilled that in our children. Um, constantly uh, challenging them to know who they are and to know whose they are and to understand that sometimes the choices you have to make um, because of your value system versus um, maybe what your friends might say or what the world might say. Um, and so I've, I've really admired that about him and he's caused me sometimes to really think about who it is that I am and what my values are and how do I act out, live out those values. Um, Reggie is very real. <laughs> um, there's no pretense, um, and and he is very comfortable in who he is. And um, many things don't uh, um, don't surprise him or don't um, fluster him. I'm the one that that gets all excited <laughs> about everything. Um, things have to be this way or that way. As I mentioned, I'm a planner. Um, and Reggie is more like, let's go with the flow. If it, if it works out, it works out. And if it doesn't work out co according to the plan, it's fine. Whatever happens, it's, it's fine. Um, we'll make do. And, um, and that's really how we have lived our 30 years of marriage. Um, we complement each other. We really are opposites <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, but I think that's what has worked. Um, and his, his demeanor, his... Um, love of family, his love of me. He has never given me any reason to believe that I um, wasn't um, worthy or wasn't, um, or couldn't do it, whatever it was. Um, he's always been a cheerleader for me and for the kids. Um, my, uh, even times when I didn't think I could, I could 
handle whatever the situation was. Um, I can remember when my uh, fourth child, was, when I was pregnant with my fourth child, um, as Reggie mentioned, we have, we have three older children who are within five years apart, and then there's nine years um, between the third and the fourth. Um, so it had been a little while since I had had a baby, and um, I remember telling him that morning that my son was born that I, I said, I can't do this, um, which it's a little late <laughs> to think about, you know, not being able to, to go through with the birth, but I really felt like I, I just could not emotionally do it. I just, I, I wasn't sure what I was feeling, but I, um, I was nervous, um, anxious, and um, just... Uh, not feeling like I could handle it and um, and Reggie just <laughs> said he said well sure you can and that was it <laughs> and all of a sudden I thought okay I I can do this um, and he was right there for all all of our children's births for their birthdays for um, their, their games their concerts um, he's just uh, He's always been supportive of, of them and what they're doing. He's also chastised them when necessary, um, as a good father should, to help them understand that um, there are choices and consequences, um, and that we, we need to make choices based on uh, our values. Um, one other thing that I, I wanted to mention about Reggie is that he's, um, he's always been a one who has been determined to provide for his family um, through thick or thin whatever is happening it's family first and and his role as father as husband as provider he takes very seriously and um, I can remember um, through he had actually started a, his own business um, years ago he wanted he, it's been a dream from the time I met him and his father was was an entrepreneur and that's where he got that spirit from um, and and his father had actually run several businesses and Reggie had helped out and and gotten counsel from his father and saw uh, some of the choices that he had to make um, in balancing that entrepreneurial spirit and family um, and so Reggie was determined that he was going to start his own business and he was going to do it better. He was going to take the lessons from his father and, and uh, incorporate those into how he managed his business. Um, uh, he started the business and as a, was in business for a few years and things just didn't work out um, long term. And so he decided, made the really tough decision to say, okay, I'm gonna walk away. Um, I knew it was, that was a tough thing for him and I uh, wanted to support him, but, um, but he was really looking out for family. Uh, we, had our, we had one child, we had our second one on the way and he really looked at the future and said, I need to make sure that I'm providing for my family. And he sacrificed his dream um, in order to make sure that we, myself and the kids, were, were taken care of. And I absolutely love him for that. It was a, um, a, a real sacrifice, I think, for him. But he did it without holding grudges, without being upset. He was just very matter-of-fact about it. it. This is what needs to happen. and. Um, and we're gonna be okay. And he, he ended up taking a series of, of jobs, um, different things, until he found a, a new career. Um, and, uh, and that's when he had to make the tough choice to work at night. Um, he was working nights and weekends uh, on some kind of crazy uh, rotating schedule. And um, it was tough, it was tough for him, it was tough for me, I think, by then I had uh, the third child, so, so we were, uh, we had three children, five and under, and um, it, it was a tough time. I always say we, we got through it by the grace of God. Um, but during that whole time, I never worried about, about 
security, um, money, um, how we were going to make it, um, our relationship. I, I just knew that, um, you know, he was committed to, to me, to the kids, to the family, and that he was going to do whatever it took to make sure that we were provided for. And I never, while things were tough at times, I never doubted his love for us, never doubted his um, sincerity, never doubted his work ethic. Um, so it's through those things that I think God shows us um, who, who we really are and who those people are that are around us. Um, and I think through that, my love for him has grown. I think the, the children uh, respect him and, and have that same kind of work ethic that no matter what, we're gonna do what we need to do to take care of what we need to take care of. And, um, and I see that in them, especially the, the older three because they're in their 20s. Um, and so they're all out on their own doing their own things and making their decisions. Um, and I see a lot of the way that they approach life in them. I say they're all, um, actually all four of them are more like Reggie than they are like me, um, which I think is a good thing. He's, um, he's really instilled in them uh, some really good qualities. Um, first and foremost, I think, is love of family um, and, and, that, and that faith that God will see us through if we put our faith in Him. Um, and for that, I, I love him, I thank him, um, and look forward to another 30 years of marriage with him. So to all those fathers that are out there exhibiting those same kinds of values and um, just providing for their families, loving their families, loving God, and, um, take, and living out their faith, I thank you. And um, I'm sure your families love and appreciate you, even if they don't say it all the time. Um, so I just wish all of you a happy Father's Day. No matter where you go, always know you can depend on your Father's love. I knew that Aaron would be a wonderful father when we were still dating. And I saw him around his nieces and his nephew and they were so excited to see him and they ran up to him and they played so hard and they love him so much to this day, even though they're all adults, they love him so much. And I just saw the tenderness that he had with them and I knew that he would be a wonderful father, um, but I had no idea he would be the incredible father that he is today from the moment we found out that we were going to have a baby to today. He is so attentive. He was attentive to, attentive to me throughout my pregnancy. Um, when we came home from the hospital, you know those first few diapers, like the yucky <laughs> diapers? All of them are yucky, but those first few that are just really crazy looking, I never even saw those diapers. He took care of her completely and let me recover from childbirth. Um, he fed us every, every meal. I just sat on the couch and he brought a meal to me. And he fully took care of me while I took care of our daughter. And now they are best friends. They have inside jokes. They go to the park together. They go to events together and they have the best time with each other. And I love to watch their relationship. My husband's a musician. We have a studio in our house and my daughter loves to spend time with him in his studio and create music. My father's a musician and I got to go to the studio with him. So it is so beautiful to watch their relationship as they create and make music together because that is something my father and I did and I know how special that is and I know how that brings a father and a daughter together. And I always wanted my daughter to be a daddy's girl the way that I am and she absolutely is. She loves her mama but she loves her daddy and I'm so appreciative of that relationship and the work that he's put in to make sure that 
they are close and that they will always be close. I feel like he learned a lot of this from his dad. My father-in-law is so loving. All of his kids love him, and I'm including myself and my brother-in-law, who are his kids that came in later in the relationship. But we love him so much. I know that if I ask for the moon in a couple days, my father-in-law is going to make sure I have it. He, There's not a thing that I need or want that he doesn't provide for us, and that's how he was for his kids. He loves his kids so much and he loves his grandkids so much. And I see so much of his parenting in Aaron. And I'm so happy and I feel so blessed that Aaron has this lineage of men, including my father, who uplift her and love her and let her know that she can be anything she wants in this world. So I am <laughs> a little uptight as a mom. Um, and I don't know a lot of moms that aren't this way, but there are some, and I envy those mothers. But my husband is very fun with it. He's serious when he needs to be serious, but he absolutely is fun first. And a lot of times I'm like, where's your shoes? And, where are we gonna put this and this needs to do, 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 do. My husband's like, oh, it's fine. And it reminds me that everything isn't as big of a deal as I think it is. It helps me become more relaxed and I get to be a fun mom, especially when dad's around. <laughs> On your father's love